Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, it's Sunday, the May 21st, and uh, getting ready to uh, to collect the next group of students for class this week. It'll be our fourth week. And so we've learned some things um, over the, uh, the last three weeks that we've had. And not that we've learned some things, but we've learned that we need to educate. Um, the students before they come in, and I'm sure there's others out there that this is this is going to help. Uh, on these YouTube videos, I'm going to go back to the to the beginning, to the to the foundation. I'm going to go back to the Wrangler School and the schooling, and and I'm going to start doing some of the old redoing some of the old series and stuff, and to get back to the foundation and heart of what this channel started out as, and that was a Wrangler School. Um, and so anyhow, that's what this is this morning. We've had some students come through and we've had all great students. We've had very good time, but there's been some um, lacking areas in the clothing and, and everything. Some things that uh, we didn't give enough in-depth information on. And part of it is my fault. Some of this stuff is so ingrained over so many years i just don't think about other people not being experienced about it not knowing about it uh so i want to give you for writing and for coming to school in particular or just where you're at for writing just just some some pointers on the clothing okay some little things that you just may not you may not think about so we'll just start the top and work down uh we're going to talk about the hat now, as you can tell, I got my old hat back. Um, I got it back. It's that my Rand's uh, Hatter hat. And uh, they are, um, I'm going to give a shameless plug here. They are uh, partners with us now. And uh, you saw in two or three, a couple of the last videos, and one of them I talked about, they built me a new hat. But a hat's like an old friend. And I had left my old hat with them, and they redid it and cleaned it and and blocked it and shaped it and sent it back to me and I'm glad to have it back. You're not gonna, not everybody's gonna go get a custom made hat. But for a hat, I'll say first off, number one, get the best you can afford, all right? Um, number two, make sure it fits, all right? You need to be able to do your head, like if you're gonna be riding, you need to be able to do your head and your hat stay still, okay? Uh, if you do your head like that and your hat kind of moves to the side, a little bit of breeze, a little bit of movement, you're always chasing your hat. The wind's always blowing your hat off. You just well as not have one on your head. Um, in fact, when I was wrangling, I would have people come out, and obviously they just bought a new lightweight straw hat and uh, shining like a new dime, and I'd make them move their head, and, and I wouldn't let them wear the hat out on the trail. I've had a string completely blow up one time. People scattered to the four winds because wind came along and blew somebody's hat off and it blew right through the horse herd and, and blew everything up. And uh, the other thing is, uh, if you lose your hat out here, it's gonna cost you a bunch of money. Because <laughs> we have a rule, everybody that loses their hat, you gotta buy everybody drinks that night. Okay, so if you wanna save some money, you need to get a hat that fits. You also need to get a hat that has a brim enough to shade you from the sun. Now, you wouldn't think so. All right, we're still getting down. Last week, we got down to 36 one night. And uh, we're getting up in the mid-70s in the day. But the way the air is out here in the mountain and everything else, people are sunburning already. We had a young lady came last week, and she had a, a narrow brim hat, you know, just kind of a felt narrow hat. And, uh, and she got a lot of sun on her face. I mean, she was really red. Uh, the purpose of the hat is not to make a fashion statement. It's not to say, I'm a cowboy. All right, it's to shade you from the elements. And uh, so if it won't stay on, it's not going to shade you from the elements. And if it's too narrow, it's not going to shade you from the sun. That's, that's the purpose of a hat. Now, people are always asking me about straw versus felt. I don't own a straw hat. I haven't owned a straw hat in... <coughs> I don't know, 25 years. I don't wear them. I wear a felt hat uh, year round. And uh, straw hats, for me, 
And in my experience, in high wind country, some folks have more trouble keeping them on their head, okay? Um, but if, uh, if you're gonna get a hat, get one that's gonna fit you if things get kind of windy and get a little bit of movement around. And to get one, especially if you're coming out here to school, get one that's gonna have a wide enough brim to shade you from the sun. Okay, that's his purpose. All right, so we'll move down. Second thing is the shirt. We had, we had a young lady the second week of school and she burnt. All right, she had a short, so she had a tank top on and her shoulders, I mean, burnt to the point of peeling and right away. It's, uh, the sun is intense. All right, we're not Arizona hot here, but we're in high thin air and the sun is intense. We had someone this week said I said that I had given them uh, a summer goals. They said, <laughs> Dwayne, that is a hand tan right there. And that's a cowboy tan, all right? The brown goes to there and it's white the rest of the way up. The long sleeves protect you from the sun burning. All right, so I wear long sleeves year round. Uh, and and my, my, arms are, my arms are white, all right? No farmer's tan, it's a cowboy's tan, okay? And uh, so you wanna have, if you wanna wear t-shirts, you gotta layer, okay? So if you wanna wear t-shirts, but have thin long sleeve shirts that you can, because of the weather up here is, when the sun go, hold, goes behind the cloud, there's a definite noticeable temperature change. And then if a breeze comes up, that changes it that much even more. And then the sun comes back out and the breeze drops and the temperature goes up quite a bit. So like Shelby, my daughter here, she wears like four layers and she's always swapping her layers out, okay? Uh, so just come, come prepared for that and just be aware that, uh, that the, sun is, the sun is definitely an issue. Uh, jeans. Now I've been asked since since I first started this, I wear Wrangler jeans, all right? I wear the 13 MWZ cowboy cut jeans and I have forever. That's what I wear. Um, but you wear what you want, but there's a couple things about your jeans you need to be aware of. Um, had a young lady this week, she she wore jeans. Okay, we're supposed, supposed to wear jeans, that's best. She wore jeans, but they were some kind of fashionable jeans and there were like panels, you know, the legs like here. And then they sewed a panel and they sewed a panel. Well, she realized that she had made a mistake up there in the saddle because every one of those panels where they sewed, that was a seam, all right? And so that seam was rubbing on the inside there. Now it's a, you know, it's kind of a thing. People talk about cowboys in their, in their tight jeans. All right, that originated, the purpose of the tight jeans was to cut out wrinkles. All right, if you're riding in rough country, you're riding rough stock, rough stock, and your jeans wrinkle up, you got baggy jeans on and they get wrinkled up against your saddle, then you're gonna get a big old blister on the inside of your leg. Had a, a guy, a young man last year, he came and, and he wore the Carhartt, uh, like carpenter jeans, heavy carpenter jeans. You know, it's got the loop and the pencils and they were kind of loose. And uh, if you're just doing a little bit of trail riding around or whatever, that's okay. But if you're gonna be in the saddle in rough country uh, for a long period of time, you don't want that, okay? You don't want wrinkles and you don't want excessive seams and, and you want things that fit, okay? Um, I did a video a long time back about form over function and uh, you want function or function over form. I guess I said that back, back backwards, okay? Uh, function is important. And so just stop and think about it, what you're, what you're doing. The purpose of your clothes is not just to cover you up, cover your nakedness, and it's not just to make a fashion statement. It's to protect you from the elements. It has a purpose, okay? And then boots. Um, the, uh, a lot of folks, you know, they'll go buy a pair of cowboy boots because they're going out to Wrangler school and that's okay. Uh, it's not a hundred percent necessary. If you've got a good pair of lace up hiking boots, uh, if you've got something that's comfortable, something that's fully enclosed, uh, then that's fine. If you've got something that's going to, that looks 
cowboy that looks all cowboy, but it's going to hurt your feet and you're going to be twisting your ankle and carry on. And it's better to have just a good lace up pair of, uh, of hiking boots. If that's, if that's what you got. All right. And so that's all right. We, uh, sorry, they're having a brand. I'm, I seem really distracted right now. They're branding just down the road and there's like a lot of traffic going by here and it, we're not used to much traffic and it's really distracting me. Um, so anyhow, that's that. Just want to give you an update. The other thing is, is springtime in Wyoming. You never know when it's going to rain and you need, you need rain gear. Okay. Now here's an option. Now this is, this is Deanna's saddle slicker. All right. It's made by Outback Trading. Now I'm, so it's a raincoat, but like on her, it's long. It goes over the saddle. Okay. Um, but that's kind of expensive if you're not doing it for a living. So you can go and get these saddle slickers, but they're just lightweight nylon. This one's a weatherproof PVC shell. Okay. And you can see the picture on here. It comes down and it'll cover your saddle, but you don't have to go spend $130 uh for some and uh, these these this isn't sponsored this is they just picked this up in the local store here uh and uh and it's i mean it's 45 dollars okay uh you can probably afford that so you you might want to think about bringing something like that okay or having something like that uh when you ride more folks coming in I'm just going, we're going to do this anyhow. We're going to keep it real. <laughs> yep. Okay. Keep it real. Get in the gate. All right. So that's, that's anyhow. I just want to do a short video and help you with that. Um, for those that are asking, what have we got going? It's my breakfast cigar. It's my Charter Oak Connecticut shade. Uh, I ran out the other day and this is not a cigar I like to run out of. So I got on Cigar Place and ordered me some more. And, uh, and so yeah, I want to, I want to, you know, remind you about them. If you need a place online to get cigars, uh, cigar place, if you do cigarplace.biz slash dry Creek and, uh, and that lets them know that, uh, you've come from here and, uh, they're a good company They take good care of you. They ship stuff quick. They pack it good. And, uh, I got on look this morning, a box of these charter oak. Connecticut Shade Grandes, which are the 6x60s, which is my favorite. They're like $118, which is a really good price for a box of, I think it's 25. Uh, so uh, anyhow, I get asked all the time, my uh, recommendation for new cigar smokers just starting out, that, that's a really good start. The Charter Oak Connecticut Shade, and I go over there to uh, cigarplace.biz and and order you some. Just order you five if you haven't tried them. And give them a try. And uh, hope you guys have a good week. And just remember, be logical, be reasonable, be safe, and have fun. We'll catch you guys next time.